Welcome to the Personal Pension Radio Podcast, where it's all about helping you complete your financial journey to retirement. Discover time-tested strategies and get unconventional insights into wealth building and retirement that actually work. Break away from the herd and go for the retirement you dream of. And now, here's your host, the income engineer, Craig Strom. All right, back on Personal Pension Radio, episode number 131. Awesome to be back on the show. I really do get excited about uh, recording these. Today's going to be a short and sweet, uh, based on actually some listener feedback. I really appreciate all the feedback. I appreciate the emails. I appreciate the LinkedIn connections. Uh, I got a, a post actually through LinkedIn uh, that uh, just good feedback. I really appreciate it. And today I am tired. I record these episodes on the weekend. And I'll tell you what, working out in the hot Southern California sun, because uh, I do a lot of my own uh, projects and yard work, I just enjoy it. But man, it just takes the energy right out of you. So don't worry, I am fired up about today's show. We will get right into it. Yes, you are listening to Personal Pension Radio. I am the income engineer. My mission to deliver the retirement dream that Wall Street promised. That's the thing. Wall Street's been promising the retirement dream for 30, 40 years, ever since the 401k started out in 1978. And unfortunately, that retirement dream is just not working out because Wall Street does not have a handle on the retirement income equation. The retirement income conversation is one that Wall Street just does not like to have because Wall Street in general... That is where I learned to be a financial advisor, folks. So just as a you know, full disclosure, I'm a trained, licensed, certified financial planning professional, chartered financial consultant, investment letters after my name with numbers, etc. But Wall Street trained me in the, in the way that benefited Wall Street. Wall Street has no major incentive to teach people, you, how to take money out of their system. That is just not something that benefits Wall Street. So why would they ever spend any significant amount of money or time teaching people how to take money out of the system? That is the disconnect. This show is about connecting the dots. The retirement income journey is a two-part journey. It's one complete trip up the mountain and down the mountain accumulating, saving, investing, growing your assets and investments, and distribution on the downhill side of the mountain. You can't get to the top and just stay there. When you climb a mountain, the primary objective is to get back down. Retirement income planning is the distribution phase, and you've got to have everything packed correctly for that journey. So that's what I am all about. This show is all about just hoping to get you fired up and asking questions about retirement income, thinking about things differently. Now, quick disclosure today. I want to just jump right into the episode. So I am not an attorney. I'm not a CPA. I am that certified financial planning professional that I mentioned. But please don't act on things that you hear on this show as if you're getting any kind of advice. This is meant to be inspirational, motivational, perspirational, whatever you want to call it. But please, meet with a qualified financial planner before you make any decisions. And dear goodness me, don't take advice from financial entertainers, people who are not licensed, people who are unregulated. Please, meet with someone who gets to know you, that gets to know you in detail before they make any kind of recommendations. So let's jump in. Last week, if you didn't listen to the last episode, uh, 130, uh, talked about Parkinson's Law. Parkinson's Law is is so important. It's uh, basically where your expenses rise to meet your income. And if you haven't heard my take on it, go back and listen to the last episode. I've gotten some excellent feedback on that. Thank you so much uh, for the positive words for those of you who have uh, sent those my way. Now, what I want to do is I just want to jump into this listener question. And you'll see by the title of this podcast episode, Revisiting Ken Fisher's Love Affair with Annuities. Ken Fisher's Love Affair with Annuities. I had done an episode a long time back, and 
Uh, this was specifically related to Ken Fisher of Fisher Investments. And this question just uh, brought it uh, back up again. And I thought it would be an excellent idea to uh, uh, give you my perspective uh, on this question uh, on today's episode. So Bob writes in. So Bob writes this. He says, Craig, my financial advisor said that I'm better off sticking with my investment portfolio and avoiding annuities. I have listened to your podcast many times. Well, thank you very much, Bob. I really appreciate that. And I hear you say that annuities should be part of a financial plan. So I Googled annuities to see if I could learn more about them. Now, just to be clear, Bob and, and everybody listening, I don't say that annuities should be part of everybody's plan. I'm a big fan of certain types of annuities, preferably in my book, guaranteed annuities uh, that do things that guaranteed annuities do. And that's a whole different specific uh, topic that maybe I could go into on a different show. But specifically, I like guaranteed annuities. I don't think that they are necessarily um, something that should be in everybody's financial plan. However, they should definitely be considered. Uh, they can be an extremely valuable part of a retirement plan and a retirement income plan specifically. Now, uh, Bob had said that he went and he Googled annuities to see what he could learn about them. And he goes on to say, the first thing that came up was an ad by Fisher Investments with tips to avoid buyer's remorse. And uh, this is an ad by Fisher Investments essentially warning people uh, not to buy annuities. And he says, are you aware of this and what's your position? Well, first of all, again, thank you, Bob, for your question. I really appreciate it. Yes, I am well acquainted with Ken Fisher's annuity hate speech. That's the best way we could put it. Um, we being the industry that is not afraid of annuities, uh, the conversation around annuities and investments all in the same boat. But we are all very well acquainted. I specifically well acquainted with Ken Fisher's annuity hate speech. Um, you could have searched almost anything with the word annuity in it and Fisher Investments advertisement would come up. Absolutely almost anything related to annuity um, would, would just pop up with that number one at the top of the list, Fisher Investments, some sort of hate speech or warning about annuities. And here's the thing. The truth is, in my opinion, the truth is that Ken Fisher, the CEO of Fisher Investments, one of the wealthiest men in the United States, he loves, loves, loves annuities. He absolutely loves them. When you see his advertisement that says, why Ken Fisher hates annuities, totally calling BS on that. Ken Fisher and Fisher Investments clearly love annuities. Now, rather than give you just uh, you know my take on it, I like to actually reference Kim O'Brien. Kim O'Brien wrote an excellent article uh, that you can find on Insurance News Net. It's insurancenewsnet.com, but if you can't find it, because uh, Personal Pension Radio is still under construction, if you want a link to the article, uh, just send me an email to uh, craig at craigstrom.com. That's craig with a K at craigstrom.com. And I'll email you the link directly to Kim O'Brien's article. So what I want to do is actually just want to share some of the points from Kim's article because she did a fantastic job of really laying out why, as I say, Ken Fisher loves, loves, loves annuities, right? So now, just to be clear, she does start out by saying that he does hate annuities in this one respect, right? They are bad for Fisher investments in this one really important respect. According to a 2014 Gallup study, right? So Gallup, the big polling and so, you know, study you know, research company, most annuity consumers who buy annuities, and primarily we're talking about guaranteed annuities, but there are others that are non-guaranteed. They're kind of lumping them in here. But according to this Gallup study, most annuity consumers who buy annuities keep their money in annuities. 
And that means close to $1 trillion, $1 trillion with your finger, your little pinky finger right next to the uh, corner of your mouth, right? $1 trillion of annuity savings is lost to Fisher Investments, right? As they, uh, you know, as they say, I love how she says this, do the math. If there's a trillion dollars sitting in annuities, and if you just use a conservative 1% fee that investment companies charge, well, there's $10 billion of asset fees that are not being collected by Ken Fisher's Fisher Investments or Wall Street in general, right? So think about it. If there's a trillion dollars in the annuity world, that could potentially be seven, eight, nine, ten billion dollars in fees that are lost to Wall Street, right? So now, when you turn it around, on the other hand, this is why Ken Fisher loves annuities, right? The annuity world must be fantastic for Ken Fisher, and Kim O'Brien goes through an excellent, excellent list. Number one, here's the, the reasons why Ken Fisher loves annuities. And I couldn't have said it any better. So here's what Kim said first. Fisher Investments clearly, based on their aggressive, dominating marketing uh, strategy, they must believe that annuities are a major, major benefit and a source of revenue and assets under management for Fisher Investments. I mean, the amount of money that they clearly must spend on advertising and driving that marketing strategy for annuities, it's just amazing. So there must be money in it, right? They would not spend that much time and effort in aggressive marketing if there wasn't. Number two. Fisher Investments licensing requirements. This is so important that you hear this. Advising against annuities. So listen carefully. An investment advisor advising against annuities does not require an insurance license that permits you to be able to sell annuities. See, insurance agents... And advisors who are not registered investment advisors are prohibited, are stopped by law from giving any specific advice related to securities, investments that people own, and especially prevented from recommending that they use those investments to fund an annuity. So pay attention to that. That's so important. It's like a, it's a double standard, a complete double standard that the licensing requirements for the folks at Fisher Investments or any other investment house basically say that you can advise people all day long that annuities are the wrong idea and you don't need any specific insurance licensing to do so. You can talk bad about them, advise to get rid of them, etc. And in, but on the other hand, insurance agents and advisors who are licensed and trained and, and registered to provide annuities to their clients, they are not allowed to offer any specific advice related to securities, and especially they're not allowed to suggest that they be canceled, sold, or liquidated in order to fund an annuity. Total double standard. However, the securities industry... The, the Wall Street industry in general does not have any prohibitions for the unlicensed and untrained investment advisor for discussing and advising against annuities and recommending their surrender. Now, there's a little terminology uh, just to make sure you get a definition. A surrender of an annuity is generally canceling a, an established contract. But the securities industry doesn't have any prohibition against these unlicensed investment advisors making recommendations to get rid of an annuity, right? Next, another real big advantage here and why they love, 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 love annuities, Ken Fisher and Fisher Investments, avoiding other pesky insurance regulations. Now listen to this. It is illegal 
against the rules for insurance agents, people who are licensed to sell annuities, for example, it is illegal for insurance agents and advisors to offer rebates, right? So what is a rebate? A rebate is an incentive to buy something. They, they are prohibited by law from offering any monetary or beneficial uh, inducement to customers in return for purchasing a product. So how does that work for the folks at Fisher Investments? No, no, no. Do they have that kind of a, uh, a limit? Are they prevented from offering rebates, incentives to change or buy their product? Nope. Securities laws do not have the same uh, hindrances and Fisher Investments publicly offers kickbacks, rebates for people who cancel their annuities and suffer surrender charges when they cancel the contract. So Fisher Investments actually offers rebates, right? What's Now, here's in addition to that, the manner of the rebate isn't even an item that is regulated. So in, and I've actually ordered uh, Ken Fisher's um, uh, Why I Hate Annuities, you know, book, you know, you get this big 90 page book and I, I've looked at it. And when you look at it, the fine print, listen to this, the fine print on the disclosure area says that the surrender charge, so let's say that somebody had a, an annuity and then they, they saw this pop up and they clicked on why Ken Fisher hates annuities and then they talked to somebody who is not licensed to sell annuities or may not even truly understand annuities, but they talk really bad about the annuities and convince that poor customer uh, without really good, solid information. They convince them, yeah, you can get rid of that annuity, you can cancel that annuity, and we'll cover the penalty, the surrender charge for early termination of the contract will rebate that back to you, right? So in the fine print of the Fisher Investments paperwork, it discloses that the surrender charge is rebated. Remember, that's not allowed for people who are under the insurance licensing only. But the surrender charge is rebated over time in the form of reduced advisory fees. Ah, reducing their advisory fees. So think about this. A $500,000, so this is the example that Kim O'Brien gave, a $500,000 investment, which now becomes maybe $465,000. Now, where did the money go? It went to surrender penalties. That $35,000 could have been a penalty for early termination of that annuity contract. That's a big deal. But Fisher Investments is recommending this constantly. Don't worry, Mr. and Mrs. Client. We're going to give you back that money that you lost in surrender fees. And here's how they do it. So they take the $500,000 annuity and now it becomes $465,000. Ah, but you're going to recover your $35,000 over the course of how many years? Several years, years and years to recover the money, right? But that's the thing that they miss. So now you have $465,000, and yes, your fees are reduced, and you're going to make up some money every year in a reduction in your fees. But really, do you think maybe they bump their fees up a little bit to cover the, air quotes, reduction in fees, right? But now I, you only have $465,000 actually working for you, right? So if the annuity transfers are being rebated with lower management fees, then the clients who don't transfer annuity funds must be paying higher fees. Think about that. If they're rebating the fees, that means people who didn't transfer annuities, they must be paying higher fees then, right? If I, if I were an investor that didn't move money from an annuity, right? I, I agree here with what Kim says. I'd be asking, why am I someone who didn't move annuities to Fisher Investments? Why am I subsidizing all of these folks that you're soliciting to bring their annuity money over, right? That's a big question. And isn't it, again, really 
simply just rebating. It's a kickback. It's not allowed on the other side of, of the fence when it comes to insurance licensed annuity people that work with the annuity business. But Fisher Investments is not regulated by insurance laws. So they are allowed to get away with ads and and interview commercials, infomercials. You know, if you look at Forbes and things like that, that would be considered. Now, listen to this. I if you if I in my you know with all of my licenses, because I do have both investment licensing and insurance licensing. If I were to use advertisements with the same type of uh, very misleading types of, of hooks and, and uh, ways to pull you in, I would clearly be in trouble. That would be just illegal. It would be a violation of all kinds of different things in the annuity world, right? Now, there's another piece of this. There's another great point that annuity money is easy money for Fisher Investments. Annuity money is easy money. Annuities are easy to liquidate and transfer funds. So anyone who has funded an annuity with other financial products, so let's say we went from an investment account to an annuity, you probably know that moving money from a a risk environment like a a Wall Street stock type account, you know, like a big brokerage house type account, that moving money from those things to a let's say a guaranteed annuity is fraught with all kinds of difficulties and and barriers and you've got forms to fill out and and even moving the money from one annuity to another is difficult enough and time consuming. However, when Fisher Investments helps their clients terminate an annuity, they do not have the same handcuffs and the limitations by the same rules of suitability. These words are called churning and replacements. Churning and replacements are big no-nos in the annuity world. But all insurance laws that protect the consumer from fraud and these unsuitable sales, they're not enforced in the same way when it's just simply an investment company encouraging you to move your money away from an annuity. Okay, So when an annuity is replaced with another annuity, or if the money is a direct transfer from another financial product, the annuity advisor must convince the insurance company that the new annuity is better in many ways than the old product. The insurance company is required and liable to make sure that everything's above board before they cancel one or the other, right? It's just not the same when Fisher Investments is encouraging people to transfer and surrender annuities. So... I guess a long way around. I get excited about this because it does. The, you know, I am part of the Wall Street advisory community. I just choose not to play by the same mu music. I, I believe that there's a different way, a different approach, that it's not one versus the other. The challenge is when you've got folks like Ken Fisher out there beating the drum that says annuities are bad, annuities are bad, annuities are bad. That's his mantra and he doesn't have any effective regulatory oversight that is causing him to have to say, to prove it, for example. Like, prove it. What, what gives you the basis to be able to say this or that or do that, right? Rebating, right, on these accounts. Oh, my gosh. Like, still, he operates on a different set of rules, whether, whether I agree with him or not, and I don't. He operates under a different set of rules. So back to Bob's original question. How do I feel about Ken Fisher and Fisher Investments tips to avoid buyer's remorse? I would suggest that it goes both ways, right? This is one of those situations where if you've ever wondered whether annuities today or tomorrow, somewhere down the road, might fit into your world, into your plan well, that's where you've got to find out. You've got to meet with a qualified financial planner. You've got to sit down and really understand 
the different types of annuities. You've got to understand what are they good for? What are the downsides? What's the pros and cons of an annuity? You can look at the pros and cons, we just talked about it, of Ken Fisher's investment account uh, wiping out $35,000 in surrender charges, right? That's a big downside that is whitewashed over with rebating, right? So you've got to find out the details about annuities in general, and then where do they fit? Because they're not necessarily right for everyone, but it's important to hear this. They means multiple different types of annuities. There's lots of different flavors, different ways that annuities uh, can be used as part of a comprehensive uh, investment or income plan. So please, that's really the lesson or the, uh, the message that I want to get across here is, number one, Ken Fisher and Fisher Investments, absolutely one of the most biased, Wall Street-centric uh, marketing campaigns uh, on the planet. And, and you know, more power to him. Uh, the, the, the system doesn't prevent him from doing it, and he is just going full tilt, and they spend a ton of money on it. I just hope that you, the listening audience out there, don't fall for it. Remember, Wall Street does not have any financial incentive to teach me how to teach you to take money out of the Wall Street system. Remember, there's all this money in annuities, and it's not at Wall Street. So Wall Street is definitely prone to not liking annuities because they would rather have that money under their control. I get it. That's just good business. It's unfortunate that folks like Fisher Investments and Ken Fisher, uh, they, they use these types of marketing ads where people like myself cannot do that. And I wouldn't. I personally, even if I was allowed to advertise the way that Ken Fisher does, ay, yeah, yeah. I just don't know that I could. I just, I don't feel that it's, uh, it's actually a, a very honorable, a very above board way to advertise, but it's apparently pretty successful for him. Now, Awesome. I promise to be brief on this episode. Really appreciate the question, Bob. Next week, we're going to look at economics-based planning. Again, just building on micro versus macro and building on guaranteed versus non-guaranteed. We'll build on that. Please don't forget my offer for uh, e-money that uh, if you want to try the e-money system, please send me an email to Craig with a K at CraigStrom.com and just put E, the letter E, money in the subject line. E money is an awesome cash flow planning and estate planning tool, advanced planning, budgeting. It is one of the best, if not the best tool that you usually only get if you have a full-blown financial advisor like myself. So if you want to look at your own situation in a different light, try eMoney. Send me an email. I look forward to talking with you again real soon. Don't forget, the future belongs to those who take action. Thanks for listening. listening to the personal pension radio podcast if you missed anything during the show that's okay we took the notes for you check the show notes for links offers and a full transcript and don't forget to head over to personalpensionradio.com and download your free retirement income report while you are there we would appreciate some itunes love please leave us a fantastic rating on itunes by going to personal pension radio slash itunes thanks again for listening now for the disclosure <laughs> Information presented is for educational purposes only and is not intended for solicitation, sale or purchase of any security or financial product. Be sure to first consult with a qualified financial advisor and your tax professional before implementing any strategy discussed here. The term personal pension refers to a marketing name designed to educate future retirees and retirees about the economic principles behind creating their own pension like income. The term personal pension is not intended to be confused with a defined benefit pension plan offered by an employer or by a government entity.